Our cutting board is ready for finish, but since it's going to be coming into direct contact with food, we want to consider the type of finish that we use very carefully. You could put no finish at all, and that's a perfectly fine solution, but eventually this board is going to start to look really dull and dry and possibly even develop some cracks if you don't put any finish on it from constant wiping with a, a wet rag to clean it off. Another option would be a film finish. Now this would be perfectly fine on the non-contact surfaces, but on the area that's going to be in direct contact with food, we need to consider that that area is also going to be in direct contact with a knife edge. Now, while shellac and varnishes are really completely food safe once they're fully cured, with constant abuse and cutting on the board, the knife is going to start to score that film finish and eventually it's going to flake off, uh, it's gonna crack and it's just gonna look really terrible and you're gonna end up having to strip it or plane it and refinish it. Probably not what most of us want in a cutting board. That leaves us with penetrating oil finishes. In terms of penetrating oils, we have several options. The first being a commercial cutting board oil. Now, cutting board oil is really nothing more than pure mineral oil, and it can be found pretty much in every drugstore and supermarket. Now, while mineral oil is certainly claimed to be food safe, it's really not my personal favorite. First, it's not a natural oil. Mineral oil is a byproduct of petroleum refinement, and that's not really something that I want coming into contact with my food. The second issue that I have with mineral oil is that it never dries. So you'll apply the mineral oil to this cutting board and it'll soak in, but it's going to continue to leach out and bleed through. And with constant cleaning and wiping, you're going to remove the oil and it's going to have to be reapplied very frequently. Also, and this might just be my personal opinion, I feel like because mineral oil never dries, it's more apt to allow food odors like onion and garlic to be soaked into the cutting board and then these odors can get transferred to other foods that are cut on the cutting board. My personal preference for treating cutting boards is a natural linseed oil product like this one. It's a combination of linseed oil that's been polymerized using heat and natural beeswax. Now linseed oil is a drying oil so once it's applied, it actually dries in the wood. So it needs to be reapplied less frequently because it's not going to leach out like mineral oil does. Also, because it dries, at least I feel that it does a better job than mineral oil at preventing the cutting board from absorbing food odors from things like onions and garlic. However, not all boiled linseed oils are created equal. The variety that you'll find in the hardware store is actually not boiled at all. It's treated with chemical dryers, some of which can be very toxic. So my recommendation would be to stay away from the boiled linseed oil that you'll find at the hardware store. The savings in costs buying hardware store linseed oil versus a higher quality product might come with a much higher cost. Other drying oils like tongue oil and walnut oil can also be used on a cutting board. However, once again, avoid the hardware store varieties. Most of these contain tons of petroleum solvents and chemical dryers and are not food safe oils. Avoid anything that's not a 100% natural oil. And of course, any discussion of using drying oils has to come with the requisite safety lecture. Make sure you dispose of any oily rags properly. Drying oils create heat as they cure, and if you ball up a rag, that heat can be trapped in the rag and it can spontaneously ignite. It has happened to me, so this is not anecdotal. It happens, it can happen, so please dispose of your rags properly. To apply this finish, you take some on a rag, and we're gonna rub it vigorously into the surface of the board. Now you don't need to apply a lot. This may look like a lot, but I'll spread this around. If you over apply this, it could become gummy. So err on the side of 
thin coats rather than a super heavy thick coat. Now, because this product has beeswax in it, it will be a little thick, kind of like honey, even in the warmer months of the year. It's kind of cold in my shop right now, probably in the 50s. So this is a little extra thick right now. In these cases, if you have a heat gun or a hair dryer, you could warm the finish and the surface of the wood after you apply it, and that'll help it to soak in a little better. And if you don't have a fireplace or a wood stove to burn these in or a fire pit or a tub of water, you can just lay this rag out to dry, but make sure you lay it out nice and flat so that any heat can dissipate. So after about 45 minutes to an hour, you wanna come back and buff off all the excess oil. And you wanna rub this out until the surface feels dry. It shouldn't feel oily or greasy or wet to the touch. You wanna to make sure you get off all the excess oil and the surface should feel dry. Then you're gonna let it sit in a warm place for about 24 to 48 hours. Then you can do another coat the exact same way, rubbing it in, letting it sit for 45 minutes to an hour and buffing off the excess. And after another 24 to 48 hours, your cutting board will be ready for use. So that's it. As you can see, it's a really simple finish to apply. And if your cutting board starts to look a little dry after some use, just apply another coat following the same process. There's no refinishing required. And the finished board is a work of art worthy of any chef's kitchen. And I hope you'll use yours proudly.